Hi everybody, so this is the model that we're going to use in the first part of the lab and I want you to really familiarize yourself with the controls before you really get started, okay? I think it's really important and it can be a lot of fun to experiment with this and really get used to, to playing with it before you start the lab and I think if you do that then the lab will be very straightforward. So basically what we have here is a carbon cycle very complicated this is the stellar version of the carbon cycle here and you can basically see all the all the knobs and bells and whistles with these stellar connections and over on this side is the ocean model that we already used in um, module 3 lab so you really don't need to understand this of course but it it, it shows you how complicated it is and, and we'll see later on why it's such such a good model Okay, so the, 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 the bottom line is we have three different emission scenarios that are controlled down here by these switches, okay? We have a business as usual switch, um, which is basically the worst case scenario, scenario, emission scenario A2, and you can see that is here. It goes all the way up and actually then it drops off, but still it goes all the way up through 2100. We, we continue fossil fuel burning through 2100 without stopping. Okay, that's this switch. So that's with this on and you can read about this down here. So if I turn this switch off and I leave this switch off and I'll explain this switch in a minute, then what we do is we level off uh, fossil fuel burning around 2010. We just level it off. Okay, which obviously didn't happen because we've gone through 2010, but it just shows you uh, what happens if we slow down fossil fuel burning. Don't completely stop it. Okay, and then the third switch is what we what we do is if we all of a sudden drastically stop fossil fuel burning, FFB halt. And what that shows is that around 20, um, 2010, we stop, let's see if I can move this up, but anyway, it's down here. You, you can see we stop fossil fuel burning at 2010, it goes down to zero. Okay, so that's basically what you what happens with that third switch. So the three switches are, three scenarios are, business as usual with this switch on, this switch off. Both switches off is leveling off at 2010. And then with this switch on, we halt uh, fossil fuel burning at 2010. Okay, don't worry about the land use switch for this part of the lab. All right, now the critical thing is we can run, let's run business as usual. I wanna show you one other thing. You run this model here, and let's say you want to then run another model. Let's say we'll turn it off and run the second one. You can see these two curves side by side. So you can see business as usual, and then you can see leveling off of uh, fossil fuel burning. And then if you want to run the third one, oops, excuse me, sorry about that. We're just going to turn this on. And then you see, you see the third switch, the third scenario here, three. So one, um, business as usual, two leveling off, three fossil fuel burning. But what I wanted to show you also is that if you want to then start over again and do something different, you restore everything, okay? In general, it's a good idea between experiments to restore everything, to get everything back to back to usual, back to normal. And then one other, one other tip that I just thought about is if for some reason the model isn't working for you um, and you aren't using Google Google Chrome, switch to Chrome because it's the most stable um, uh, it's the most stable browser for stellar models. All right, so let me show you the output that we, we can get. So let's have business as usual. This is global temperature change. And as I said, the, the, the emissions, the fossil fuel burning stops at 2150 or so. And so you'll see this temperature de decrease, which isn't really important for the lab. CO2, you can see it rises steadily here and then drops here. pH goes down and then rises a little bit, but you can see it's going down. This is ocean pH. And then one other thing I wanted to show you is make sure you can read the values here. So I'm going to click on the curve and you can see it running along the curve. It shows you the values down the bottom. Run 1, 8.14987. And then moving down the curve, you can see the values. You can see both the year and the value. So now I'm 2040 and I'm now at 2083. My value is 7.844. And now I'm down at um, 2040, excuse me, 
2153 at the bottom and my value is 7.55. Okay, so make sure that you can run the, the uh, cursor along the curve and read the values, not only the year, but the values if, of pH, temperature, CO2, etc. All of these different curves, you can do this, which is really, really helpful and very important for the lab. All right, so then we also have um, how much of the CO2 is absorbed by the air, how much is absorbed by the ocean, how much is absorbed by the biosphere in the, the uh, purple curve, number three. Moving along, page five shows you fossil fuel burning, which shuts off, as I said earlier, around 2050 or so. <clears throat> this is both CO2 and fossil fuel burning, fossil fuel burning in red, uh, CO2, atmospheric CO2 total in um, blue comparing those two curves. This here uh, shows you what happens in the biosphere. It's the atmosphere in one, the land biota in two, how much CO2 is absorbed by land, how much is absorbed by soil, how much is absorbed by permafrost. And then this here shows how much is absorbed by surface ocean and deep ocean. This here shows you the um, gigatons of carbon uh, from fossil fuel burning. And then finally, comparison of the model and observations. So this shows you in, in blue, the um, model run. This is the model run that we have established with this carbon cycle. And in red, we show the observed atmospheric CO2. This is measured in the atmosphere through 2010. And you can see how close they are together, which shows that this model works really well. All right, so that's a good summary of what this model does. This is for the first part of the lab, step one and I will be producing another video for step two.